and it's headphones nail. of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a fuller-than-usual episode, um, just because I had a lot of time to watch a lot of different things, so I'm actually going to break down this episode in a couple of different categories. So the first one is going to be um, the movies and TV shows that I watched, um, but I'm also grouping those mo- um, a t- the TV shows um, in order just because they're related. Um, same thing with the second section because it's a, related to, they're both related to roller coasters and amusement parks. And then the final section is going to be all Star Wars related. So with that being said, uh, last week, Beverly Hills Cop Axel Foley or Axel F or I guess a simpler way is Beverly Hills Cop 4 was released to Netflix. So I definitely recommend watching it. It was very good. Or it was a very good movie, um, not necessarily a theatrical release quality version of a film because a lot of it was throwbacks to um, the prior films. You know, when you have things like um, Jason Gordon Levitt's character talking about how he had some pretty good cases, but his um, third showing was kind of um, on the low end, kind of as a nod to how Beverly Hills Cop 3 was not very well received. I think that was the amusement park one, and I didn't think anything negative about it, but I kind of want to watch it or rewatch it just to see how it holds up. But I mean, in general, everyone is um, old. It deals with um, Axel Foley dealing with his daughter and then pulling in, you know, Taggart and Rosewood. Um, Surge is in there. So, you know, all the major characters make an appearance. So, um, oh, but overall, the jokes landed. It was a good time. Everything worked. Um, played out nicely so I definitely recommend watching it. Um, I say that as a good sequel just because I ha- also haven't had a chance to watch the fourth Bad Boys film so once that av- that's available for streaming somewhere I do still want to watch it to see how that one is but I haven't had a chance to see that just as an unrelated side note. But Beverly Hills Cop Axel F uh, definitely a good watch so I, def- I recommend uh, watching it if you're a fan of Axel Foley or the Beverly Hills Cop films. Now for the next sec- set of reviews, it's going to be um, all Game of Thrones related. So I did have a chance to watch High House of the Dragon Season 2 Episode 4 and um, a very good dragon heavy um, episode where we have a dance of dragons because you have um, Rain, and I always forget her, um, the princess's name, Reina or Rainies or whatever, going into um, fight, I guess, the Rook's Rest area where Kristen Cole is, you know, on basically having a really good set of days. So kind of, he's kind of turning into, I don't want to compare him totally to Jamie Lannister, but he's turning into a Jamie Lannister type of character where. You know, he's having a bunch of good days. He's having he's on a hot streak and he's doing, you know, he's getting that his mojo and cockiness and all of that. So Reyna goes to fight them off with her dragon. But um, the king ends up showing up as well with his dragon because he um, he doesn't think anyone's listening to him. No one treats him like an adult. Um, And then um, Eamon also goes with his dragon to back them up. I couldn't tell if that was all part of his plan to take the kingdom based on what I was reading online, but I did like that he showed up. He was waiting to see how things played out, and it looks like um, the king might be dead, but I guess um, they left it at a cliffhanger, so it's hard to say if he's actually dead or not. Um, But regardless, um, he is knocked out, but Reyna died in the battle. Like, she defeated the king, but um, she died in the battle with Aemon and his dragon, so uh, definitely a big loss there. Um, But I am curious to see how things play out, or if they're going to play things out with those eggs that they're sending, the dragon eggs that they're sending across the Narrow Sea. But... Um, I think in the context of the current season, it doesn't really, it's, I'm, I'm going to say it doesn't matter, but I'm only saying that in the context of the current season, not in the grand scheme of the Game of Thrones universe. So um, overall, a good watch. 
Um, but on a related note, um, I ended up starting to watch um, the season premiere for Game of Thrones. And since I started watching that, or started about a week and a half ago or so, a couple weeks maybe, I decided that I wanted to rewatch the franchise just to see how it all holds up. Um, I know, I think, or it feels like people have started to cool down a little bit on the finale. Um, and my stance kind of has been, well, overall the show holds up except for kind of the ending and maybe just the last episode. Um, but I do kind of like rewatching it at peri- or I've been trying on a thing where I want to rewatch it periodically just to see how my thoughts change on it just because, um, overall for me, I didn't mind the ending to the show i my whole take on it is that yes the last couple of seasons and the ending and all the storylines seem to be a lot faster but it's also because we have a lot fewer story arcs by the end of the show so in the beginning you know you're learning about all the different houses all the different families all their characters so you have a lot of content packed into the show when it starts but by the end of it, you're really only looking at the war in the north, so against the White Walkers, and then in the south, you have the you still have the ongoing fallout from the war of the five kings, the loss of um, um, King Robert, um, Joffrey chopping off Ned Stark's head, and all of that fallout. So, because of all that, like by the final couple of seasons, you're really only dealing with that, and you still have the the personal relationships going on but you know, and then you know you have um Sansa you know dealing with the whole Ramsey thing you have Arya becoming a faceless person and dealing with that um Brienne trying to find them and you know um and dealing you know going across the countryside for all that stuff so um basically by the end of this by the final season all of those story arcs have kind of ended and you're now in the end game where you're only dealing with a couple of things everyone is um where they should be everyone's met up you know the starks have met up with each other you have um jamie going to the north but still kind of being um a wild card you have cersei in the south you have you know Tyrion with um daenerys and all of that stuff so Regardless, I wanted to rewatch it, so I'm, uh, I finished the first four seasons, and I'm now in the middle of uh, season five. So, um, like I said, it's for me personally, it's always been yes, the seasons start to feel like they're getting faster and faster, but it's also one of those things where you also have fewer storylines, so you're not switching between, um, for example, fifteen story arcs. You're now switching back and forth only between five story arcs for example and I'm pull, I'm totally making up those numbers but you know for example that's kind of what you're dealing with because you know by season two you're in the war of the five kings but then once that all pans out and you have um the, um Cersei's third kid um and I'm drawing a blank on him but by the time he becomes king and Maris marries um Natalie Dormer's character and all of that, you know, a lot, there's a lot few, a fewer things. And then, you know, by the time of the Red Wedding, that kind of, it doesn't solidify the, the new story arcs, but it kind of puts a bookend on the, the story arcs of the first couple of seasons. And now you're into the next step of Daenerys' dragons going up and establishing her foothold and then, you know, becoming the, a true Khaleesi to, you know, move into, um, to start making her play onto Westeros and all of that stuff. So that's kind of my take on that. So next up though, um, as far as the theme park stuff goes, um, I did actually have a chance to make it out to Knott's Berry Farm. It was a quick afternoon visit. So the link in the show notes will have the photos and a few photos and videos didn't do too much. Um, but you know, right now they're, they have ghost town alive. So a lot of that stuff's going on. Um, I had a chance to take a, a photo of hang time in a view that made me realize how well designed the ride is. Because of the way the track is designed, it does look a lot like the way the motions of a wave in the ocean. So they, it has actually themed very nicely to that end as far as going back and forth and you know as if you're you know surfboarding and you fall under the water and all the uh, tumbles and stuff that you take 
Um, I did find a bit of chalk art that I found funny where they have an outline of a guy and it says run for mayor, not a dead body. So not really morbid, but kind of funny too. So um, there's that. And then I took a picture in Boo Hill Cemetery, which I think I did this before where I wanted to do another themed photography trip to the park where I do all of Ghost Town in black and white. I do all of the boardwalk in oversaturated colors and then the Fiesta Village in all vibrant colors to kind of make the whole those three main areas um, kind of stand out in each of their unique ways. So if you're a fan of the theme park, then I recommend going now for Ghost Town Alive. And then they'll have various other stuff throughout the rest of the year. But for summer, they have a lot of the summertime events going on and all of that. And then of course for Montezuma's Revenge, um, they do have more scaffolding up for the ride for the tower. So it does look like they're making some progress as far as getting the track laid and um, getting the parts in to get that the ride up and running by 2025. Um, but then in related news, I have continued to play Roller Coaster Tycoon, so I finished the map Crazy Castle. So this is one of those maps where I think it does look like I um, was able to beat it before, but it felt like it was a harder map to do than I remember. So one of the things I recommend in this map is that you do have pathways to the castle, um, so you have the ground level and the pathways to the um, to like the ramparts around the castle, like the over the wall. So one of the things I recommend doing is um, deleting the footpaths to that upper level because I, my memory of it was that your guests get feel like they get lost a lot um, by having those footpaths, so they're you know wandering around aimlessly. There's nothing to do. So on all four sides of the park, I think there's at least one or two. Um, paths to get to that level so the first thing you want to do is delete just one square like whether it's at the top or on the ramp or something so no guests can go up there and then expand the park and build out your um, food stalls and rides and all of that on the lower level and then uh, once you have guests in the park and you have a couple of information kiosks or at least one information kiosk then you want to um, rebuild those uh, fill in those squares and let your um, guests go up there so that way um, you can fill more guests in the park and even though they may start to feel lost a little bit um, at least you know there there's going to be information kiosk so they're not totally lost and they're going to buy the map park maps and all that um, and then one of the nifty things I found this time is when you're building rides you can actually build them through the castle wall so I did that with the log flume just to have a, a super long ride and have a long queue um, and same thing with a couple of the other rides, just have a lot of long queues and that actually helped out a lot. I was able to, I think the guest requirement was, um, the guest requirement was 1500 guests in the park. And by the end of it, I got up to um, over 1,700. So that's actually more than usual because usually once when the requirement is like a thousand guests, I get up to like a thousand fifty, maybe 1,100 if I'm lucky. So um, that's one of those things that you know just as always, like I've been saying lately, just have a bunch of long queues to keep people in the ride or in the ride queue so they stay in your park, but keep the ride moving so that they're not waiting in an excessive amount of time and that way um, their their um, approval factor stays high they don't get bored and things like that and you know you get my continue to get money and things like that so that's my recommendation and tips for crazy castle in the emerald group um, so uh, as far as all the Star Wars stuff goes I did have a chance to watch episode 7 of the acolyte and um, I kind of want, I'm still kind of holding off hope. We still have, we get more backstory on when the Jedi went, went to meet the um, Night Sisters to get Mei and Osha. Um, I did like the ending in particular for the episode because you have, um, and I forget the Jedi's name now, but he accidentally kills Mei and the Night Sister Mother Lady. And she ends with a line saying that she was gonna let Mei join or Osha join the Jedi, 
but I got to thinking that I wonder if she only said that to give the Jedi guy um, guilt for killing her, or if she was actually gonna do it because May wanted to, or because Osha wanted to go. I have a feeling she only said that to give the Jedi guilt over his actions and make him question his abilities just because she wanted to keep the family together and all that. So um, still holding off hope for my theory of Darth Plagueis. There was a view early on in the episode where we see the Night Sister outside one of the doors to some building. And I almost thought that like, sweet, we're going to have an episode with Plagueis, but it turned out to be the Night Sister. So I wonder if that's kind of like a Easter egg nod to what's coming up for the rest of the season. But um, in any case, a decent episode. Didn't think anything negative about it. Overall, um, enjoyed it. So definitely recommend watching it. Um, and as far as the rest of the review goes, I did have a chance to finish playing Knights of the Old Republic 2. So I'm done with the gameplay. All videos are up on the... Um, um youtube channel with the playlist the playlist is in the show or a link to the playlist is in the show notes so um definitely worth checking out but this particular review is something i realized um when i was on the ravager portion of the game and it's something that mandalore was telling uh visas mar that um they were talking about where revan went why he was happy to be the soldier and all of that. And it turns out that Mandalore does know that he went out to um, the unknown regions on the own. He Revan asked him to stay behind and keep a watch out, rebuild the Mandalorian clans. And Revan needed to deal with a threat out in the unknown region. So part of me thought that a great Knights of the Old Republic 3 story arc would be the exile going out to the unknown regions to find Revan because one of the options in the game at the ending is either you can destroy Malachor 5 and be done with it and you kill either yourself or you know end Kreia and um, all of that or you can go out to the unknown regions or stay behind in the Republic. So if between what Mandalore says and between and picking the option of the exile going out to the unknown regions to find Revan that would have been a good premise for KOTOR 3 in that your character goes out to the unknown regions, you visit, you know, five, six, seven different planets to find Revan. And, um, you know, as you visit the planets, you, you know, build up, you know, you land on the first planet, you don't know what's going on. So you have to either unlock the other planets or you have to visit all these different areas and um unlock the final planet so along the way either you find revan or my memory kind of is that the emperor the sith emperor uh, or the sith empire emperor found revan and placed him in a holding tank to um, augment his own powers so you end up on you know in the emperor's palace on dromund Kas or wherever as a final palace you find revan and um release him and either as a dark side um, ending, you tell the Emperor that the Republic is shattered, that Jedi Order is destroyed, so he can now um, attack the Republic, or he can, um, or you, as a light side thing, you go up against the Emperor and you fight with Revan to destroy him. Um, and whether or not Revan stays on the light or dark side, you know, that can be an ending just to, uh, depending on how the option you choose. Um, because I think, and if you, you know, if you lose and you have a cutscene saying that, uh, that the Emperor won and Revan's back in the jar of augmenting his power, because I kind of think, remember that being an option or something, but regardless, make that the ending to fight up against the Emperor. Um, alternatively, kind of like, um, I kind of want to say with like KOTOR 2, well, because in KOTOR 2, you, you meet up with, you know, the handmaiden and the dis or the disciple, depending on your gender. So you I was, alternatively, you can meet Revan or sooner than the end rest of the game. But, um, so, you know, for example, he's still in the holding tank. And when you release him, um, you know, Revan is you can keep can Revan as a canon male. But alternatively, you know, prior to being the emperor on Roman Kass, you know, meet up with him, meet up with Revan, add him to your party. And he's a required party member at the end. So it was one of those things where that would have been an interesting story where you go up, go to, you know, six or seven planets in the um, Empire. So, you know, Droman Kass. And that's me, like, I think because that's the Sith capital or whatever. And then you go to 
um, various other places um, of note and um, have all that. So I thought that would have been a cool game to um, have released. But because I guess the Sith Lords was so uh, controversial, it was rushed out, there was missing content and all of that, that kind of hurt our chances of a KOTOR 3. But it, I mean, I, I do know that it was all resolved in um the old republic mmorpg but it was still would have been nice to have a standalone game that does all that and maybe they'll do that with the kotor remake where they you know combine all that or add more stuff like that but and maybe that's why they're having all those issues but regardless it's one of those things where um it's a bummer that we didn't get um a kotor 3 to round out the revan story arc but that is all for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comment, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post um, by visiting any of the social media sites. All of them are linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. All the gameplay videos are up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash battlehen01. If you want early access to the show, um, an ad-free version of it, a link to the YouTube version um, before everybody else. You can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash patelin01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.